Let's talk about Shadow and Bone Season 2. Hey guys, I'm Marilyn and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about the second season of Shadow and Bone on Netflix. Now I know I usually do book reviews, but because this show is based on some of my favorite books, I thought it would be a good idea to share my thoughts on how well they did with season two of Shadow and Bone. And as with my book reviews, I will be rating the season in terms of different categories and then aggregating those scores to get to an average score. Now, before we dive into the first category, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell so you don't miss any videos. I post writing advice videos every Wednesday and a book review, or in this case, a show review, every second Friday. I also want to preface this video by saying that there will be spoilers. So if you have not watched Shadow and Bone season two yet, I suggest that you stop this video, go watch it and come back to rant with me. So let's dive in. First category is plot. So. I'm gonna be honest, the plot this season was a bit all over the place. Not great storyline mapping and using kind of a story structure. It was a bit, yeah, like I said, all over the place. It wasn't the greatest plotting, but it was still a fun storyline. It was still fun to watch how the story progressed. I think what's important to remember is that even Lee Bardugo, who writes the books, said that these are not the books. It's basically a fan fiction with a huge budget. And so don't necessarily expect strict adherence to what happens in the books because you will be disappointed. I liked that they w wove in storylines from different books into kind of one season and pull them together, made some stuff happen at the same time, whereas in the books they kind of happen after each other. Some of the plot points I couldn't even remember from the books, um, but I'm not sure whether that's because they weren't there or just because they didn't really make an impact on me, but you know, anyway. Then something I just wanted to address, I don't know if you put this with plot or whatever, is that I found the fight scenes to be absolutely terrible. I don't know, I've seen people rave about, you know, some of the fights, but I just couldn't. I think that the way they choreographed them, the way they shot them, the sort of slow motion, the jumping through the air and doing somersaults and everything, it was a bit much. I just didn't like the way the fight scenes were done at all. Then the Crow storyline merged into Alina's storyline quite late in the season for my liking. Some of the book events from Six of Crows was definitely rushed. Um, and I think that is one of the biggest criticisms that people have towards this season is that stuff that took a long time and really carried a lot of weight was very rushed in season two to kind of, they basically put the entire Six of Crows plot into the first few episodes, uh, which, you know, isn't great. But despite all of that, the Crows parts of the season are still my favorite, just like they were in the first season. I would have liked a bit more of Inesia's backstory as well. They focus a lot on Kaz's, which it was very cool to see, um, but I would have liked Inesia's as well. And then also I would have liked more of Matthias. He was there, but he was very background in this season. But the creators have not just even hinted, but they have said that they have written a Six of Crows spin-off that's just focusing on the crows. And so I guess that they might be leaving some of those aspects for the spin-off, which, you know, hopefully Netflix will pick up. Then, you know, some stuff that I was a bit annoyed by in, in the crows storyline is firstly the whole Inej and the taxidermist thing. I know that that was a thing in the books, but like I didn't see the necessity of including it here. It just seemed like another plot point that was just thrown in because why not? It didn't really, I don't think it was necessary to put it in there, to be fair. Then the old saint lady, I can't remember her name, um, but when they go to Shu Han to get the sword, she was just a bit far-fetched for me. Now, I know like 
some people really love her and I do think that the whole Shu Han and Sword plotline was really fun to watch. The heist was fun. But just that character herself, I don't know. I, I just feel like she was just a bit too much, like her fighting and the fact that she was this legendary character but she was only there for like one episode. I don't know. I just felt it to be a bit, a bit far-fetched and a bit bizarre, but you know, that might just be me. And then I was very, very annoyed at the end of Matthias's storyline where Nina drops the pardon and people step on it and it's ripped apart. And it, it was just so frustrating. And you know, I get that they're leading up to something else, but I was just like, this is the worst way to do it. Like, I honestly felt like I wanted to shake people by the throat and be like, just look on the floor. But you know, overall, I really liked watching The Crows. I don't think the plotting was necessarily the best in the world, but it was enjoyable and, you know, I think that's essentially more important. Then Alina's storyline. It wasn't as interesting as The Crows to me, but I felt this way in the first season too and I think everyone feels this way. I didn't really like the dream sequences or the like meeting of, in the minds of between Alina and the Darkling. Um, especially because they started the season with a dream sequence and that's just, I think, not good writing. Um, so yeah, I just felt like it was overly dramatic. Didn't really enjoy it, but I guess it at least gave us a bit more of Bane Barnes, so maybe I shouldn't complain. I really liked Nikolai's introduction into the story, being introduced with the crows first and then with Alina and Mal and his progression through the story. I think they did really well in weaving Nikolai's story into the crows and Alina and Mal's story with events from different books kind of coalescing to happen at the same time and I really really like his character but we'll get to that in the character section. And then I think that the ending was oddly placed. So the Jyodaparem or Yodaparem whatever um, storyline was suddenly introduced in like the last two minutes of the show with Kaz doing a voiceover and this woman appearing at Nikolai's coronation and basically killing everyone and I just think that it was it was too quick you know there was like five minutes to introduce this very big storyline which yes will be explored later on so it's not like it was necessary for that season but I think that if you hadn't read the books you'd be very confused and be like what the hell was that and then I really like the uh, hint towards Alina maybe going dark and I like the fact that they had Mal go away and, uh, you know, be the privateer. Um, I think that that really suits suits him. And so, yes, I did enjoy the, the story, but I don't think the plotting was the most amazing thing in the world. And I think that if people didn't know the books and the books didn't have a big fan base that were automatically also fans of the show, people would have been very confused and would not have liked this season. So for that reason, plot, I'm giving a 2.5 out of 5. Then next, characters. This is the base part of Shadow and Bone and it's the base part of Lee's writing in general. She is so good with characterization and creating amazing, compelling, complex characters and I was just once again struck by that watching this season and that's especially the crows I mean I would watch those characters do basically anything so let's look at some of the characters so firstly Alina I like Alina in the series more than I did in the books I think she has a bit more spunk she's a bit more feisty but she is still yearning for that kind of normalcy and you know I like the balance they kind of got with that uh, she she just appears as a bit of a stronger character in the series than she did in the books, you know, whether you like that or not, I I quite enjoy it. And I do think that um, JC's portrayal of her is great, and I think Bane Barnes in, in an interview for the first season said, you know, if you're going to have someone who's the, little f who's the literal personification of Sunshine, it would be JC. Then let's look at Mal. I didn't like Mal in the books. I was one of those people who was like, mm, she should have chosen Nikolai, but I do quite like Mal in the show. I understand his motivations better and his reasoning behind things and, and his reactions. Um, 
I really enjoyed his relationship with Nikolai and how that kind of developed and how there wasn't any kind of almost jealousy between them or, or weird feeling between them at least not from like the second conversation they had with each other and I really enjoyed that. I enjoy that Nikolai is also Mal's friend and not just Alina's. And then I also think that Alina and Mal were very cute in the season. Uh, you know, before before they had their fallout. Um, in the first episode especially, they were they were very cute. Then Nikolai. I really liked Patrick's portrayal of him. I feel like Patrick is Nikolai. Like he looks like him, he acts like him, he speaks like him. It's just it was perfect casting. He's a fun, likable character, but he's also serious and has a big role to play in terms of the plot. And I really like that kind of dichotomy that shows kind of his two different sides uh, him being a Prince Nikolai but be also Sturmont. Um, on that note I also wanted to address the pronunciation of some of the things um, of some of the words I would have wanted the pronunciation to be a bit more Dutch um, yeah I, I'm Afrikaans and that's quite close to Dutch and so I was just you know the whole time going like they wouldn't say it like that. Like even Ketterdam would be Ketterdam. Um, Sturmhund is how you'd say that. Sturmhund, not Sturmhund. Um, and then there's Rietveld, which is Rietveld, Rate something. Uh, when um, Freddie Carter pronounces it. Um, there's uh, Van Poel, that would be Van Poel. Um, and then there's also the stat watch, not the stat watch. Um, yeah, so I feel like th they were, these things were kind of sticking with me, but I don't think they would have necessarily stuck with, with an English audience. Um, yeah, so when I say Sturmont, that is because it's closer to the Dutch pronunciation. So anyway, off that tangent, I think Nikolai was included and introduced in a good way. Um, and that he was very important to the season. I really liked, liked his storyline here and his characterization. And I think he was also giving a good arc throughout the series. Then Tolia and Tamar, the twins. I know people really like them, but for some reason I just don't. I feel like the acting was really bad for both of them. And I feel like they were very stereotypical characters, you know. It's like they have these personality traits and that's essentially all they are, you know. Tolia likes poetry. Tamar is reckless and a badass. And that was kind of all, you know. I feel like it was very one-dimensional and over the top. You know, I feel like they tried too hard to make these characters, you know, cool and exciting and the characterization was kind of pushed down your throat. Then Zoya, I don't really have much to say about Zoya. I mean, she's a cool character, but she didn't really stand out a lot to me. I do like the fact that she was like, do you really expect me to break into someone's house? You know, I really like that side of her, but also that she is realizing her mistakes and, and making amends, and I liked her and Nina's uh, dynamic. Jenya. I really, really loved Jenya this season. I think that acting was just phenomenal. Her, pro her acting was probably one of the best in the Alina storyline um, and the way she just handles things and carries herself. You know she's been through a lot of things but she's so resilient and yeah I just I really really love this character and I think I love her that much more because of this season. Then there's David who is so sweet and super useful like he just is so resourceful and smart and just knows so much um and you know he is always kind of trying to help even though he seems a bit awkward while doing it so yeah i really really like david this season especially in relation to his relationship with Jenya. but we'll get to that the darkling i really obviously enjoy ben barnes's portrayal of the darkling I liked his story this season because I feel like it was very nuanced and three-dimensional. It was interesting to see the dichotomies within him. Um, I really, really liked his reaction to Bagra's death. Um, you know, he... 
it's it's a very difficult character to categorize you know yes evil but also not also broken and kind of wanting good for for people for the grisha at least um so i i i enjoyed his complexity in the books and i enjoy it equally as much in the show so i think he's a very very good antagonist or villain but his scars looked so fake it was terrible every time i looked at him i was just like really that's the best they could have done with the scars it just it looked terrible i mean genius is so much better um i don't know i just yeah that, that put me off a bit every time I saw him on screen. But then the crows, the crows will always be the best characters. These characters are just so well written that, you know, I can't. First, there's Kaz. The most complicated, complex, morally grey character and so fucking hot. I mean, he was so sexy in this season. I couldn't, like... People would think you'd be, you know, into the Darkling or Mal or Nikolai, but it was Kaz. And I know I love his scheming, seeing some of his motivations, seeing his backstory, seeing how he loves the crows without saying it, you know, all of the little things that he does for him and, and you know, to care for them. It was just, just amazing. He's one of the best characters ever, and I think Freddy Carter's portrayal of him is stunning i could not imagine anyone else playing kaz he is kaz breaker so he always has a plan and even when you think he isn't behind something or something went wrong nope he actually orchestrated it and i just love that um i love that especially in the books and they translated it quite well into the show and then i like i said i didn't really like the fight scenes of the season but the way kaz fights with the cane that was amazing. I really, really enjoyed that. Especially as someone who has used a cane a few times in her life because of, you know, disability. Um, it was really, really cool to see the cane being a weapon rather than a liability. And also him giving the cane to Nikolai at the end and then having the new um, cane with the, with the crow's head and the sharp beak. Amazing. Then in Nej, I really like Inej, everyone loves Inej, she, she's the knife wife, um, but I would have liked much more of her backstory. I understand they might be saving it for the spin-off, but they focus very heavily on Kaz's backstory, and with Inej it's just like, oh, she was in the menagerie. But there's much more than that, um, and they also talk about Kaz kind of trying to find Inej's family, but I would have liked to see her interaction with her family or like a flashback or something before that so we could understand the importance of Kaz having searched for her family. And I like to see how much she actually feels for Kaz and that they made it pretty obvious in this season that she has feelings for him, but she still stands up for herself and says, you know, I will have you without armor, Kazbreka, or I will not have you at all. Loved that scene, by the way. It was amazing. Jasper. Jasper, also one of my favorite characters. His sense of humor, his just whole attitude, his personality, his swagger is just so fun to watch. And I think, you know, Kit Young brings the perfect just spark to that character. And I love, you know, how he uses humor as a defense. And I especially loved seeing the hallucination of his mom um, and, and an explanation a bit about that. There's a lot more in that backstory, I think, to explore. Um, but I think that that is being saved for the spin-off and that I kind of understand a bit more than Inesia's backstory being kind of withheld from the audience. And then I really enjoyed Jace for embracing his powers. I know people were saying, you know, it was a bit too rushed in the show because in the books it takes a much longer time for him really to come to terms with being, um, what is he? He's not called Peralki, he's a jurist, I think. I think? Anyway, um, I really liked the, the fact that he uses his powers in, in the end. 
um, and he was doing it so well. That was such a cool scene. Just the way that he like had his guns and then they were frozen and then he used his buttons like that saint lady told him to. And he was so confident about it. I just, I absolutely loved it. And, and I think Jasper's character is just, he's so fun to watch, you know? And that's the most important thing. Then Wylan was my actual absolute favorite this season. I think Jack Wolf is amazing. He's so pretty. Like, I just want to stare at his face a lot. But then also, obviously, an incredible actor. And I think the subtle acting he brought to the character was amazing. Just, you know, the little facial expressions, the head movements, the, you know, looking away and smiling when Jasper says something cute. It just... <sighs> He melted my heart every time I saw him. So I think, you know, he's sweet and innocent, but he's also assertive and really kind of badass. Um, and I really like that the portrayal of Wylan in this season brought both of those sides. You know, he's not just this, you know, cute cinnamon roll. He also has, you know, he, he is kind of impulsive sometimes. He... He does do very brave things and he does stand up for himself. I'm excited to see his backstory and how that plays out with the whole, you know, Joda Parim storyline. And then just the scene with Wylan and the butterflies was just amazing. I, I saw a post on Tumblr that said, you know, a Wylan being so entranced by the butterflies and seeing them as this most beautiful thing, uh, you know, and kind of, you know, spouting. Po poetic about them and, and scientific facts about them and then in the next moment you know handing them out like Doritos is a perfect representa representation of the two parts of his personality and I completely agree um, and then obviously you know Jace Ben Wyler's relationship in the season was great we'll get to that in the romance section then Nina I really liked how she's so optimistically in love and just kind of happy even when she's sad i don't know how to explain that but she just has this like inner energy and inner optimism that was really great to see in this season she also had the best outfits this season and i like the fact that she also you know fights well without her powers so even when she can't use her powers she's not helpless she's still a badass and <laughs> the fact that she's not intimidated by kaz at all is amazing i absolutely love their dynamic when they were pretending to be married and she was like um, well, you know, he's all hands in private, isn't that right, waffles. Um, it was just, I absolutely loved that. And the fact that, you know, she had to make it look like she was really turning Kaz in and betraying Kaz, and she just hit him. You know, she could have, like, rendered his face or something, but she was just like, nah, I'm gonna take my chance. Then Matthias, I kind of have mixed feelings about Matthias. I do really like the character, but he was very kind of meh and broody in this season, you know, it wasn't very exciting, kind of boring to watch his parts. Cal is really attractive and does a really good job at portraying Matthias, but I'm really, really looking forward to seeing more of that character and actually more of his personality coming out aside from just, you know, dutiful and stoic. And then, but I, I also love the, the flashbacks of his time with Nina and that he was just like, constantly thinking about his time with her. So yeah, in terms of characters, I would rate Shadow and Bone season two, four and a half out of five. Then there's romance. And I include this category in all of my videos because everything I watch or read, there's usually romance in it. And it's very important for me that the romance is done well. And so I have to talk about the couples this season. So let's start with the kind of most boring couple that sounds bad but mel and alina so i think that they were super cute this season like i said before especially in the first episode and also i i love mel's dedication to alina and just him always wanting to protect her and being willing to sacrifice himself for her and to to make sure that she's safe and even when he's kind of mad at her it's because she's putting herself in danger and he wants to keep her safe you know, and I think it's so obvious that they were meant for each other, even without the whole Firebird situation. He loves her so much. And I really think that once the massive responsibility of, you know, saving the world is off her shoulders, she'll be able to love him in the way that he deserves as well. 
So I like the f I like the friendship between Alina and Nikolai, but I like that they didn't push the romance too much, you know? Yes, there was a little bit of woody banter or whatever at the beginning, but it was very clear that she her heart was always with Mal, you know? She, yes, Nikolai is there for her and a great friend, but I didn't feel like they were really pushing the romantic agenda, and I really liked that. So, you know, yes, they confirmed that Nikolai has feelings for Alina, but it was pretty clear that Alina's heart will always be with Mal. Then David and Jenya, they were just so wholesome and sweet and just perfect for each other in this season, you know, comforting each other, helping each other through very difficult times. I also think it, it it's a very, very sad kind of love story, you know, with Jenya being, you know, getting the scars and, and then obviously what happened to David. Um, you know, but he's just so adorable and he loves her so much, you know, when she found that ruby, I just couldn't stop smiling and, you know, the fact that he saved a life and stuff, I just think that they are so, so cute. Then Kaz and Inej. I loved the subtle, slow burn of their relationship, but the fact that it was very clear that they like each other, love each other, but the fact that that doesn't really mean anything if, if nothing is happening in real life. And, you know, I really liked Inesia's hallucination that they put that in there, that they gave us that kind of romantic tension and chemistry, but still kept the romance quite slow burn. Um, I think that if this relationship had been rushed, it would not have been a good season. Um, her helping him when he has a panic attack, and her giving him the butterfly um, and then she has her hand over his mouth and when he wakes up you can see this kind of a moment of extreme calm before he like realizes what's happening and his panic sets in and I think that's just beautiful um, and, and you know there are some people that drown you and some people that pull you out of the water and you know her being so ready to kill Rollins when Kaz confesses that he killed his brother. That's just amazing. You know, these two are not, I want to say not wholesome people, but I think that that's not what I really want to say. But these two would tear apart the world for each other. And that's just an amazing love story. That's essentially what, what all readers <laughs> like to see. You know, I think the last conversation between them was absolutely perfect. It was almost word for word, the book scene, and just the way they acted it, it was, I would watch that scene over and over again. It was just perfectly done. So yeah, I think they have a very interesting, very unique romance, and I'm really, really glad that they kind of stuck to the books on this one. Then Nina and Matthias didn't really have a lot of interaction this season, um, but I like Nina's dedication to him and her, you know, absolute conviction that this is the person that she should be with. The fact that, you know, he can't stop thinking of her. I just really, really want them to be together already. And then my favorite couple, the best couple of them all, Jasper and Wylan. I know people are upset that they changed their love story, that it's not as slow burn, that they already knew each other before we saw them, and the fact that it was actually quite really fast and, and basically seamless kind of them getting into a relationship and just being in love and stuff, but I loved it. I think because the characters are aged up from the books, it makes sense that it might have been different, you know? having a one-night stand I think at these characters age is a bit more realistic than it would have been for the book character's age um, and I think they would be more confident they would be more settled in their sexuality um, and so you know I don't think that that was out of character or anything and all their shared scenes on screen was absolute gold even when they were just in the background and had no lines just watch them just like watch the whole show and just look at Jasper and Wylan. It they are so cute and I think the chemistry there is amazing, you know. I think I think Kit and Jack did an amazing job portraying this couple. It was just so cute. You know, the way they look at each other, the way they walk next to each other, it's just they're so clearly in love and it's amazing. And it's just, yeah, throughout the season it's just obvious that they love each other so, so much. And they kind of like 
amazed by the other. You know, they're like, this is an amazing person and this person likes me, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And, you know, like I said, like, uh, while and looking away every time Jasper says something sweet is just so cute and I like the the kind of autistic coding um, they did with Wylan's character. Jasper saying like my man and just being so proud of Wylan. Um, I just oh, I don't know I can't even find the words to tell you what I feel about this couple because they were just amazing and I love them so much. And you know I would honestly watch a whole show of just Jasper and Wylan going on different quests. It would be my, my favorite show even if it didn't have much of a plot. And so for the romance five out of five this season absolutely loved it. Then the final category is overall enjoyment. I include this because I think that with the other categories you can get very nitty-gritty and objective about you know seeing it from a writer's point of view. With overall enjoyment the essential point of a book or in this case a TV show is for it to be enjoyable and that's why I think that that should be a category in and of itself. So the overall enjoyment. Alina's storyline wasn't bad but I was a little bored especially towards the end and like the ending and with the darkling and all of that and Mal coming back to life. I just didn't, I didn't feel anything. It was just there. I was like okay this is happening. Where are the crows? Um, I love the crows obviously. Uh, I like the weaving in of Nikolai's story. The um, plot was a bit all over the place but overall I really enjoyed the show. You know I binged it in two days. I didn't want to stop watching. Um, yeah just it was all for the characters and not for the plot. So for overall enjoyment I'm giving it three and a half out of five and that means that season two of Shadow and Bone gets an overall rating of 3.9 out of 5 from me. I hope that you guys liked listening to me basically rant about the second season of Shadow and Bone. Let me know if you agree with me on any points, disagree with me on any points, what you thought about this season, who's your favorite character. You know, just, just talk to me in the comments about this because I need to talk to people about this. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Remember to hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell so you don't miss any videos. As always, you can find me on my website, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and TikTok. You can also follow me on BookBub and sign up for my newsletter. All the links are listed below. And then I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye.